What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Raw, as well as wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including is the Attitude Era back? What did The Rock whisper to Cody? The trucks in the back were no coincidence, the real reason why WWE pulled a match on Raw, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos, and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Yeah, we're changing the name of that channel. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good is number one, The Rock is the final boss. A last night's beatdown by The Rock on the American Nightmare should dispel doubts about who is calling the shots and how much the deck is stacked against Cody as he navigates the final miles on the road to WrestleMania. Unlike last year where Rhodes avoided any beatdowns prior to wrestling Roman Reigns, Cody hasn't been as lucky and the WWE is throwing one obstacle after another into Cody's path. While longtime fans might scoff that these obstacles make it clear Cody's winning, this is clearly a case of the journey rather than the destination being the main appeal. Number 2. CM Punk uses his greatest weapon, his wit. As CM Punk's Chicago hometown was a reminder of Punk's true value in the WWE, his wit. Punk roasted Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins last night during his promos, entertaining the fans and adding to the hype for the Drew vs Seth match, with Punk revealing he'll be providing color commentary during the match. Punk's promo had some pipe bomb elements, as he not only indirectly referenced Jim Cornette, telling Pat McAfee he knows a podcast, but he listens to the experience and the drive through which are Cornette's shows. Naturally, fans are going to wonder whether Punk will get involved in the match, but that was just part of what made Punk's promo so memorable. Punk blasted McIntyre and Rollins, showing that while he's still a babyface, Punk is no use for the heel McIntyre or babyface Rollins. McIntyre threw in a few good barbs, including his remark that Punk claims to abstain from drugs and alcohol, but he spends a lot of time in rehab. Unfortunately for Rollins, he was out of his league, and he didn't come off as strong against either superstar, but particularly Punk. Punk crushed Seth when Seth asked Punk, you want to know what I think? And Punk matter-of-factly said, no. It just made him a little bit goofy. Number 3. Fantastic Raw from start to finish A Raw was fantastic from start to finish. Last night's red brand used its big segments to keep fans tuned into smaller segments like Ricochet vs JD McDonough and Giovanni Vinci vs Andrade, giving fans a chance to invest in these undercard wrestlers. What worked particularly well was how Raw managed to follow up each big segment with an even bigger segment, compelling fans to stay tuned in. The WWE delivered two, capping off the show with The Rock's epic beatdown on Cody. Number 5. Candice's heel turn continues Now Candice LeRae has decided that winning by whatever means necessary is the only way to go, a sentiment her tag team partner Indy Hartwell clearly does not buy. Last night's Candice vs Ivy Nile told a story whilst also presenting a decent one-on-one -on -one match, another example of how the WWE used its time wisely last night. Number 5. What to make of the Chad gable Sami Zayn alliance Should Sami Zayn have lost to Bronson Reed last night? Well, having the wrestler challenging Gunther for the IC Championship at Mania just two weeks out may seem like bad booking, but it was just another way to show that Sami needs to find the last piece of the puzzle to dethrone Gunther. Chad Gable knows what it's like to face Gunther, and having him show Zayn what he's doing wrong is a clever way to add to Sami's story and give Chad a supporting role at WrestleMania. As long as the WWE doesn't go with a predictable finish like Gable costing Sami the match, this storyline has all the makings of a classic. And a sizzling showdown between Becky and Rhea. A Rhea Ripley made things personal last night, which is as good a way as any to add some heat to the upcoming Ripley vs Lynch WrestleMania match. This was the right move because the two talented wrestlers promos have focused too much on their mutual respect and not enough on giving fans a reason to root for Lynch against Ripley, who continues to get popular. Sure, having Ripley use Becky's baby girl in a promo was cheap heat, but it worked and with any luck, the WWE will follow through with another sizzling segment heading into WrestleMania. But that was good, what about the bad? As number one, JD McDonough is a flop in Judgment Day. Now, is JD McDonough a good wrestler? Well, there's no question that he is, but there's a more serious question to ask. What is he doing in the Judgment Day other than jobbing? Unlike Dominic Mysterio, who also jobs on a regular basis and got an actual knuckle sandwich from Lynch, the fans don't care about JD one way or another. Putting him into the Judgment Day may seem like an effective way to get him exposure, but given how he's been misused, it would have been better to keep him off TV until the WWE found a better program for him. Now there was absolutely nothing downright ugly about last night's Raw, it was nothing short of fantastic. A great show from start to finish and one the WWE may have trouble topping next week. However, The Rock is due to appear on Raw next week, so we do know it's going to be another banger. What did you guys think of Raw last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news.
Now first we looks at the Attitude Era could be back. Atop of today's news is the question of whether the Attitude Era is back. Fans are asking this after Raw's final segment where The Rock not only busted Cody Rhodes open, but the most electrifying man in sports entertainment dropped the F-bomb. As we're about to explore, there are plenty of reasons besides that to believe the Attitude Era is back. The Attitude Era has become legendary because it was one of WWF's most successful periods, both in terms of business success and the quality of its storylines and how the WWF presented its product. Fans have seen signs of the Attitude Era's return ever since Triple H took over creative. However, it was much more than about the use of blood and F-bombs. Raw was well booked with the WWE utilizing everything that was great about the Attitude Era and discarding its excesses, chief among them Vince McMahon's over-the-top angles like beaver cleavage and Mae Young giving birth to a hand. For example, Raw featured a modern equivalent of the Attitude Era's Crash TV, the idea of booking one entertaining segment after another to keep fans tuned in. Whether it was matches, promos, or backstage segments, the WWE gave fans a smorgasbord of superstars with coverage of many wrestlers besides main eventers. In addition, fans were treated to gripping promos where fans couldn't be sure what a wrestler would say next. Of course, we'd be remiss in not noting the use of blood and profanity. Last night's grand finale between The Rock and Cody Rhodes show how both blood and profanity can elevate a segment when used sparingly and correctly. Adding that and salty language makes the segment realistic and I just strike a nerve with fans who wondered how Cody will bounce back from this beatdown. While it's clear the WWE is bringing back the successful elements of the Attitude Era, we believe that Triple H is crafting something bigger, a product that incorporates the best of yesteryear, that being the ruthless aggression and the Attitude Era, but also incorporating modern sensibilities into the product, such as focusing on women's wrestling without dragging it down with sexist portrayals. Next up, what did The Rock tell Cody? What did The Rock whisper to Cody when the People's Champion interrupted Rhodes' promo? Fans have been guessing, but all we know is what Cody told Jackie Redman when she asked him for details. It's a promise he can't keep. While critics can argue the spot with the wrestlers whispering a cryptic message is played out, the argument is hard to sustain given all the speculation surrounding The Rock's hidden message. Though many fans have pointed out that alludes to The Rock saying that he's going to make Cody bleed tonight. The WWE has given its fans yet another reason to stick around and watch things play out at WrestleMania, just the latest example of how the WWE has hit a Grand Slam last night. Next up is CM Punk ready to rumble with The Rock. Last night's Raw had so many segments that WWE just didn't have time to cover everything, including CM Punk calling out The Rock. While the straight edge superstar referenced The Rock during his promo, Punk focused on Drew and Seth. Nonetheless, WWE gave Punk time to focus on The Rock in a digital exclusive where he told Kathy Kelly, I'm glad, I'm glad The Rock's back. It's good to see that he knows his role and he's kept his mouth shut. Anything goes here in this new era of WWE. Me being back, I'm going to cross paths with everybody sooner or later. CM Punk's dance card is already full as he's made it clear Drew McIntyre is his first priority once he returns from injury. Rest assured, the WWE will book Punk vs. Rock when the time is right, and this tease not only offers a promise of a Punk vs. Rock match, but any other dream matches the WWE can book. Next up is Drew McIntyre plotting with Paul Heyman. Last night's show also featured another of the Easter eggs that Triple H likes to tantalize fans with. If you look closely during the Miz and Truths backstage segment, you can see Paul Heyman talking with someone who looks like Drew McIntyre. Is Drew making another deal with the devil to get what he wants, presumably a world championship win over Seth Rollins? And what is he giving in exchange? Does this have to do with Night 1's tag match between Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins against The Rock and Roman Reigns? Or does Heyman want Drew to help Jimmy Uso vs Jey Uso? What do you guys think it is? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, this was no coincidence. Speaking of easter eggs, did the WWE tease appearances by several superstars at WrestleMania by featuring them in the background during last night's show? While WrestleVotes posted pictures of the WWE's production trucks, one featuring Charlotte Flair and Drew McIntyre and another featuring John Cena and Steve Austin. WrestleVotes commented, everything is done on purpose. Two weeks out from WrestleMania, the backdrop of these WrestleMania specific trucks last night would have sufficed. I'll leave it at that. The report already has fans buzzing as some believe Cena and Austin will return to lend Cody a hand against the bloodline, evening the odds when he faces Roman Reigns. It would be incredible to have Austin show up just when Cody is getting beaten down in either Night 1 or Night 2 of WrestleMania. If the bloodline show up, him and Cena turning up could definitely even the odds. And finally, the real reason WWE pulled a match on Raw. What happened to the scheduled Andrade vs Ivar match? While Giovanni Vinci put on a strong showing against Andrade, Ivar has been crushing it in singles action and fans of the big man were concerned when he didn't show up. According to Fightful Select, there's nothing to worry about as while Ivar is not medically cleared to compete, we've asked about Ivar's status and we're told that he's fine and is expected back in the ring in quick fashion. We weren't told specifically what is keeping him out of the ring right now. We send our best wishes to Ivar and can't wait for his return. 
But there you have it folks, I will look at raw as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.